welcome back to the channel today I have a follow-up on a video that I made almost two years ago now and in that video I did a I turned a drum brake off a motorcycle and it went fairly well and I said in the, at the end of that video that you know one day I would try it with a full-size disc brake and I had a, a couple candidates to do and I didn't really like any of them, but then uh, a few weeks ago I did a brake job on my brother-in-law's car and we replaced this nasty thing. Of course it wasn't that rusty then, but it's rusty now and if you see, you can probably see the grooves in here, it's really bad. As you may or may not know, disc brakes these days are pretty much cheap. They're almost cheaper, if not cheaper, to just replace than they are to turn. Uh, unless you have your own machine. So I thought, hey, let's give this one a shot. Now, I thought about cleaning the rust off of this, but after the last video, I had a lot of guys comment on that I left the rust on and how much they liked it or didn't like it. And I thought, oh, what the hell, I'm just going to leave the rust on. So if you don't like the rust, realize that I know I really should clean the rust off before I do this. I'm only leaving it on there because it kind of makes a nice contrast when the cutter cuts and uh, gives you a good idea of what the cutter's doing. So let's give this a shot. This is a disc brake off of a Camry, about a 2000 Camry, and it is approximately 11 inches. The way I have this set up here is I have it on the three jaw chuck, and you see here the chuck jaws. It's just on the edge of the front one. And then, same as last time, I'm going to take a draw bar through the center with this block to hold it on. I don't think this is strictly necessary. It's just a safety measure. So let me get that uh, secured up, and uh, we'll spin it and see how, see how accurately it is spinning. Uh, by the way, I did clean up the inside of the hub here just so we could get, uh, get it sitting flush on there, at least... I think I did. I set this up last night just playing with it. I may not have. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. I'll try to get this kind of in the center. Last time I did this and it was wobbling. The brake drum wasn't wobbling, but the draw bar sure was because it wasn't in the center. Okay, I should mention real quick just before I spin it up that I intended to put this thing on the next set of you know staggered jaws there. The problem with that is that I wasn't able to reach the nut. To tighten the chuck down and as it is I had to kind of modify a, an old extension put it on a on a ratchet just so I could get it enough down in there and tighten that up so we're gonna make sure that that's tight kind of already did this and then uh, let's spin it up and see what it looks like we are on the slowest setting I think just got a bunch of dust in my face. I think that's turning true enough. Alright, to make our initial cut, I think I'm going to use this old ratty carbide cutter just to get through the bulk of that rust. And again, I will say this again, I know we can take the rust off, it will be better. So the first thing you'll notice here is I have my compound set up at a kind of a weird angle and I've got the tool on the outside. I've turned the, the uh, quick change tool post to the outside. First thing I'm going to do is I don't want this rust all over my ways. And again, if I haven't said this already, I know I can take the rust off and this is not good for your machine. It's not good for your ways. Yeah, I don't like that tool bit. It's not going to get me in where I need to be. Let me see what else I got. All right, I think this one's going to work better. This one's also an old used carbide bit, and it more mimics the bit I'm going to use later to do the finishing, which is a carbide insert bit, TCMT. All right, so let's see if this will reach in there. It doesn't quite go to the edge, so we'll turn the tool post just a little bit. Like so. I'm not 
not sure it's going to get into the center. I'll run that down just till we get into the center. It's just going to make it. Make sure we're not going to hit anything. All right, I also need to make sure that I'm on center. I can do that with the center here. Grab a rule. Bring it in. See if it's basically straight up and down. It needs to come down a little bit. Just a little. If you're not sure what I'm doing here, if you've never seen this way of centering a lathe bit before, it's just an eyeball method of seeing if you're on center. I'm looking for this rule to be straight up and down against the cut of the bit. If it's high, the ruler is going to go that way. If it's low, the bottom of the ruler is going to come toward me. If you watch enough YouTube videos, you've probably seen that about 15,000 times. Okay, I'm going to test this one more time just to make sure I'm not clear hitting anything. I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't go too far in or I will at the edge of the compound but I have full travel there. Alright let's make some dust. Now the point of this exercise it's just to see if it can be done. I have no intention of reusing this, so I don't care if I screw it up. Okay, that's nasty stuff. Let's see what it looks like so far. better but we can still see those grooves are really deep but that is nasty stuff got a digger. And that's a shame because it was actually going fairly decently but it really dug in there and I'm not sure if I moved what. Thankfully the belts just slipped. Let's see if we can finish off that cut though. So I think what's happening is I'm actually hitting some real hard spots. You'll notice I'm getting some sparks and um, we had that one dig in and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that happened. I don't see anything that's moved. I'm going to change bits now. I'm going to go to the TCMT bit to do more finish because we're actually uh, pretty close to what a finish would look like on one of these. Again. I am not doing this to use. I'm just doing this as a test to see if it can be done. This is an 11 inch brake drum on what is essentially um, 7 by 18 mil. Let's try the TCMT here. It's already on center. I had to stop during that last cut because it was killing me with the with the chips coming off. Not really happy with the finish. I, I mean, it's working. You know, the the ridges are out now. Doesn't look like it, but the ridges are out. Um, I'm gonna try one other tool on this. I'm not happy with it so far. I'm not sure the tool I have is gonna be able to do the whole thing, but I can do part of it just because of the shape of the tool and uh, just a 
just to kind of finish this off to see if it's even worth it. At this point, I'm going to say um, I'd rather spend the $40 on a new brake rotor than even attempt this. It's it's hard on the machine, and it, this particular rotor is, I think it got pretty hot because um, I'm running into a lot of hot spots or a lot of hard spots and a lot of sparks. It's really hard on this machine. So let me get one more tool. It's going to have a little bit bigger radius, and what I'm going to look for is a little bit smoother finish. All right, we're going to try this tool. It's a CNMG. I'm going to try this edge because I'm... Because I like these and they're expensive. <laughs> so this edge is it's not that bad. It's just uh, it's got a little bit of aluminum welding on it. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to be able to run this tool the full distance because of the shape of the tool, but I can see what kind of finish it's going to give. All right, I hope you guys are appreciating this because I'm getting pelted with this stuff, but that is definitely a much better finish. You can see the difference there between the two finishes. This is very rough. This is still has a bite on it, but it's much smoother. Um, I think that's a winner. I think uh, with the right profile to get back in that corner, this is um, the type of tool that you want to use. It's more, got a larger radius on it. And with that, I think that would actually work. I think we could make that work. Still really hard on the machine. It's a lot of load um, to get through those hard spots in a few places. But, um, you know, it would work. In a pinch, it would work, absolutely, if I had to. So, uh, there you go, guys. I'm doing a big rotor on a little machine. You can see the, how big that rotor is compared to the machine. It can work, got to have the right tools, and you got to not be standing where I was standing when I'm holding the camera doing this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, I hope you uh, got something useful out of that and um, or enjoyed it either way. Seeing my machine lock up, I'm going to have to check my belts. I may have burned a belt. That's okay. I've got spares. It's all in the name of science, right? Or machining. It's not really science. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. As always, thanks. Bye.